making a salt print is to create a large negative of the image you want to use. Since very few people own a large format 8x10 camera, I'll show you how to create the next best thing, a digital negative. Once you've chosen a high resolution image with good contrast, bring it into Photoshop and first convert it to grayscale by going to Image, Mode, Grayscale. Next, you need to invert the positive image into a negative image by going to Image, Adjustments, Invert. Because we're going to put the emulsion side of the negative against the watercolor paper, we need to flip this horizontal by going to Image, Image Rotation, Flip Canvas, Horizontal. Now before you go any further with this, take a good look at your negative and decide whether it's bright enough or if it needs more contrast. Since some of you may have never worked with black and white film before, it may be difficult for you to grasp what a negative of a normal image with good value and contrast should look like. The best way to accomplish this is to determine if you're seeing a wide range of gray tones in the image plus dark and light areas, keeping in mind that dark areas will yield a light positive image and light areas will yield darks in the positive image. To tweak the negative, go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness Contrast, and then use the sliders until you get an image having a wide range of lights, darks, and midtones. If you have Adobe Photoshop, you can make even more precise adjustments by going to Image, Adjustments, and Shadow Highlights. In this mode, you can fine-tune the value and contrast of virtually every area of the negative until you get a good combination. But be careful not to overdo it to the point that the image becomes excessively modified from the original. Once you finish tweaking the image, it's time to print out the negative. Load a sheet of 8.5 by 11 inch transparency film into your inkjet printer and select transparency film as the type of medium. Be sure to scale your image proportionally to a size that will fit within an 8 by 10 inch document space, since that will be the size of the watercolor paper you'll be using. Print at the best setting possible for your model of printer. Before getting to the fun part, you have already prepared the two primary chemical solutions included in the salt printing kit exactly as instructed in the directions. These two chemicals are the salt solution, seen here in the plastic tub in a gelatin based form, and silver nitrate in the brown bottle. Henry William Falx Talbot discovered that a mixture of salt solution and silver nitrate results in a high quality light sensitive emulsion. Before applying the two chemicals, tape a sheet of watercolor paper to some newspaper or foam core to keep it secure. Next, warm up the gelatin salt solution by soaking a small portion of it in a container of hot water until it becomes liquid. Then, using one of the brushes, apply a thin, even coat on the watercolor paper. I always apply one coat by brushing horizontally along the paper, then apply another coat vertically to ensure uniformity. Allow the watercolor paper to dry or use a hair dryer on low heat to speed up the drying process before going any further. The next step needs to be carried out in a darkened room since the paper will become light sensitive after the application of silver nitrate. I usually use a low wattage tungsten light bulb located a good distance away from where I'm working so that I have just enough light to see what I'm doing. Avoid UV light at all costs since the paper will be most sensitive to it. A special note before going any further. Remember that the chemicals included in the kit can be dangerous, so be sure to read and follow all of the safety precautions listed in the directions. Silver nitrate can cause burns on your skin if it comes in contact, so it's a good idea to wear rubber gloves to avoid the brown stains that result from silver nitrate. Prior to applying the silver nitrate, I always pour a small quantity of it into a vial to give me a little more control while pouring it onto the paper. Pour a small quantity onto the paper and brush it in one direction as before. Then add a little more silver nitrate and brush again in the other direction. You can hold up the watercolor paper in the direction of the light once in a while to see that your application is even. Once you've coated the paper of silver nitrate, allow it to dry or use the hair dryer to speed up the process. Once it's dry, you're ready to make your contact print. If you're not going to make the print right away, you can always store the paper in a totally dark container that is moisture proof. Making sure that the paper is bone dry, place it in a contact printer and then place the negative on top of the paper. If you don't own a contact printer, you can simply use a clean pane of glass instead 
to assure that the negative and the paper are in close contact with each other. This is a good time to mention that you can make a salt print without using a negative and simply place objects onto the paper instead. This process results in what is called a photogram or photogenic drawing as Fox Talbot called them. Placing objects on photosensitive paper cause shadows of the objects to appear on the paper and can be quite striking unto themselves. Some photographers were later known for their stunning photograms, including Man Ray and even Pablo Picasso. The next step is to expose the print to ultraviolet light. An inexpensive quartz work light is a good source of UV and allows you a bit more control than using the sun. I've set up the contact printer on an easel and set the quartz light approximately two feet away, making sure it provides an even source of illumination. Exposure ranges from 7 to 10 minutes, depending on the density of your negative. I usually expose the print until the dark tones are a deep shade of brown, but not too much so. The print will lighten up quite a bit during the processing phase, so you need to keep that in mind. After the print has been exposed, darken the room, remove it from the contact printer, and place it in a tray of cold water. Agitate for a couple of minutes, then dump the water out, refill with fresh cold water, and soak it again for a couple more minutes. This process removes any unexposed silver salts from the print. The next step is to fix the print in a non-hardening fixer, which is supplied with a kit. I usually fix for around 10 minutes or so. This process makes the print light safe. Finally, wash the print in running water for at least a half hour or so to remove the fixer from the print. You can speed up the process by using permawash, which chemically removes most of the fixer. Once it's been washed, allow the print to air dry. And here's the final print. What I find so attractive about this process is the incredible textures you get from using the watercolor paper and the classic old-fashioned look due to the sepia color. You can usually find a number of flaws in a salt print that only adds more to its character, such as brush marks and uneven emulsion distribution. It is the very nature of this one-of-a-kind result that makes it so special and satisfying to create. Well, that's about it for this lesson. I hope I've inspired some of you enough to give this process a try sometime, whenever you feel like trying something new and different from shooting digitally. If you dare accept the challenge and follow through with creating your own salt print, please share it with us on the Photography 101 Facebook site. Until next time, goodbye.